So for the first two videos, you've done two different problem solving tasks. I've had some amazing photos through of you doing your work. It's been great to see. You've obviously really, really enjoyed it. I've seen some amazing examples as well of how you've used different equipment or pictures to help build your understanding. Keep doing that. That'll be really, really useful. Today is all about understanding the difference between numbers. So I'm going to show you some examples that will help build that knowledge. And this is going to be really useful for a problem solving task we've got coming up in a couple of days time. Good luck. I hope you really enjoy it today as well. So let's have a look at yesterday's challenge, the three numbers challenge. We needed to find three numbers with a total of 24. All the numbers had to be more than five and all the numbers had to be different. I've made three boxes to show what the numbers could be and some circles that I can put in those boxes to help me to break this down. One system you could have is to start off by putting six in each box. Then you know that each number will be definitely more than five. You just have to think, what do you do with the remaining six? Well, if I put one in the middle box and five in the right hand box, then I would have six, seven and 11. Now, adjusting from there, what I could do is you see this one here. If I move it across from the largest number to the middle one, then I will have six, eight and 10. And I could actually still move another one from that largest number box. But if I then put it in the, in the, uh, as part of the smallest number, then that would become seven, eight and nine. And there were our three possible answers. Have a look at some of this fantastic work as well. I love the example on the left because it's a great way to understand a question, a task. If you're not sure what to do, using equipment that's appropriate is a brilliant way of helping, helping you to break a problem down. The example on the right, I think that's a great way to show an answer as well, to demonstrate an understanding. Well done, uh, those, those two children. And it's, as ever, fantastic seeing your, uh, seeing your work. Now, we're gonna add in another thing to the challenge um, today, which is calculating the difference. So as a little warm up, we're gonna go for this. I've shown uh, three numbers there. I want you to calculate the sum of those numbers, and I want you to calculate the difference between the largest and the smallest of those numbers. Pause the video and have a go. And let us have a look. Um, so the sum of those numbers, when we say the sum of those numbers, we mean those numbers added together. So four and 10 and seven, I would probably add the four and the seven first to make 11 and then the 10, 11 and 10 is 21. And then of course the largest number there is 10. Uh, the smallest number is four. I could use a number bond fact there to know that, that four and six is 10. And so the difference is, is six. Well, my friends, today I've called the video Spot the Difference. We're going to focus on the difference between numbers. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is one of my favourite areas of maths to explore. And it's a great way of cheating because it's a wonderful way of making subtraction calculation questions easier if you really understand how to do it. Let's get going. Now, if I have a part of five and a part of three, that makes a whole of eight. If, I look in, if I'm looking at the difference between eight and five, I, I'm, I'm almost thinking, well, what is that missing part? Uh, of course, we know it is three. Now, that's a way of showing the difference. And that's just a little introduction to uh, some of the challenges that we're going to do. Now, I've got a very unusual task I'm gonna give you next, and it's called rank by difficulty. I'm gonna show you four questions and I want you to decide which one you think is the hardest, which is the next hardest, and then which one is easier, and then which one's the easiest one. Now, you don't even need to know what the answer is to the questions. You can, if you like, calculate the answer to the question. But the thing that's really important is you decide which one's the hardest, which one's the easiest, and why. Okay, are you ready? Pause the video. Which is the hardest, which is the easiest one, and why? Hmm, I wonder what you thought and what you noticed. Well, let me show you something that I think is interesting. The answer to all the questions is six. Now, I wonder if some of you just knew the answer to 20 subtract 14. 
Maybe you thought 103 subtract 97 a bit harder if it crosses a 100 boundary. And often children will find 29 subtract 23 easier because we just think subtract the tens and then we can subtract the ones. Whereas 31 take away 25, that seems a little bit harder. Um, I'm going to come back to those two questions in a moment. First of all, let, let's go to the picture we looked at um, just before. Um, and we're looking for the difference between 8 and 5, of course, is 3. Have a look how I can change these numbers. Let's say I change the 8 and a 5, and I change them to 9 and 6. So what I've done is I've added 1 to each of those numbers. Have a look what happens to the difference. It stays the same. When I add 1 to each number, the difference stays the same. Look at this. I've, I've, I've changed 9 and 6, and I've added 3 to each one to make it 12 and 9. And what happens to that difference? Well, it stays the same. If I add the same amount to both numbers, the difference stays the same. Well, what about if I tried subtracting? Hmm. There, I've subtracted 5 from each number. I've subtracted 5 from the 12 and 5 from the 9. What do you see about that difference? Well, of course, the difference stays the same. Hmm. Well, if I change just one of those numbers, though, Let's say 7 and 4. The difference between 7 and 4 is 3. But if I just change the 9, the difference... Well, what's the difference between 7 and 9? It's 2. So the difference between 9 and 4 is 5. It's 2 more than the difference between 7 and 4. So I can use one calculation to work out the answer to the other one. Now, this is where my little secret comes in. If you think 29 subtract 23 is easier then 31, subtract 25. What you can just do is if you take 31 and 25 and you just subtract two from both of those numbers, you actually just have an easier question. What a great little technique. You might also hear the little singing of my daughter in the background. <laughs> Let's have a look at these questions. I call these, I know so. Um, and it's because I'm not doing four different calculations there. I just know one fact and I use it to work out another one. 44 subtract 16 is 28. 43 subtract 16, well, it's one less because 43 is one less than 44, 27. What about 45 subtract 18? Now, I've added two to 43 to make it 45. I've added two to 16 to make it 18. So actually the difference then will stay the same, it'll still be 27. Well, let's have a look at this one. 45, 46, that's one more. 18, 17, it's one less. So it's one more and I'm taking away one less. Well, the answer then will be two more. Okay, now it's your turn. Now, the challenge in these questions isn't the size of the numbers, but it's really understanding that pattern. So if you find the answer, that's nice, but I wonder how clearly you can explain the pattern between the answers. Pause the video and have a go. Well, let's have a look. 40 subtract 26 is 14. 42 subtract 26. Well, two more than that, it will be 16. 43, that's one more than 42. 27 is one more than 26. So I think the difference will stay the same. Yep. And what about 43 subtract 25? Well, this time, of course, I'm taking away two less. So the answer will be two more. And there I can really see the pattern. Great job, everyone. Let's see if we can find tomorrow's work. As normal, icmass.com, home lessons, and it will bring you to the same page that we've been working from. Under the video, as always, the link goes to today's task, year three and four, and it will bring open this. Now, the thing that I really want to emphasize is that in this work, really, it's about understanding this pattern between the calculations rather than using large numbers. Now, I've got three different tasks to have a go at. You might have a go at sequence A. If you don't immediately know the answers to these calculations, this would be really good. What's the pattern that exists between the calculations here? So how can you work out the answer to this question using the information above? It might be you prefer to have a go at sequence B. 
Or equally, maybe you think, mm, you know, I can set my own level of challenge. And what I would love to see is children writing their own sequence of questions, subtraction questions, where you think of writing one question with an answer, and then you think, mm, I'm going to change these numbers slightly, and you come up with your own sequence. So, extend says this, design your own sequence of questions for subtraction. Make small changes for each new question in the sequence. Like the example I've done above, but you might adjust the level of difficulty so it's just right for you. Adults, test the children with your sequence. Children, test the adults with your sequence. So I'm going to use some of the sequences of subtraction questions that you design in tomorrow's, for tomorrow's warm-up activity in the video. So it'll be really good to get some of those sent through. Parents, I've made a video for children in Key Stage 1 um, using the Connect 4 games. So there's a video all about that. Check that out. Hope it's really useful. And everyone, I will see you tomorrow.